Good day everyone. Welcome to this subject, the contemporary world. Again, I miss Novi Di Balikot, your instructor for this subject. So we are now in our lesson six, which is all about the world of region. So in this lesson, uh, you are expected to look at the regions as a political entities, examine what brings regions together as they interlock with globalization and explore the other facets of regionalism, especially those that pertain to identities, ethics, religion, ecological sustainability and health, and lastly, conclude by asking where all of this regionalism are bringing us members of the nation and as a citizen of the world. So, world of regions. According to uh, Edward D. Mansfield and Helen D. Uh, v. Milner state that economic and political definitions of regions vary, but there are certain basic features that everyone can agree on. So, when we say a group of countries located in same geographical or specified area, or an amalgamation of two regions, or a combination of more than two regions organized to regulate and oversee the flows and policy choices, we refer it to as region. So example of regions are Europe, uh, Central and Eastern Europe region, Asian region, African region, the Mediterranean, and the Middle East, and the Americas. So those regions are made up of uh, nations or countries. No? And when we say a regional concentration of economic flows and its process of dividing an area into smaller segments called regions, we are talking about regionalization. So one of the most obvious example of regionalization is the division of nation into different states or provinces. So businesses use this regionalization as a management tool and a way to make certain that needs unique to a particular area are met. Next is when we say a political process characterized by economic policy, cooperation, and coordination among countries. We mean this as regionalism. So, Regionalism meaning to say a political ideology. So it seeks to increase uh, the political power or influence of the people of one or more subnational regions. So it focuses, focuses on the development of a political or social system based on one or more region. So those are some of the definitions important to the topic, our topic for this lesson, the word, the world of regions. So countries or nations respond economically and politically to globalization in various ways. First, some countries are large enough and have a lot of resources to dictate on how they participate in the process of global integration. So, for example, China, no, the country China. The Ch uh, China offers its cheap and huge uh, workforce to attract foreign businesses and expand trade with other countries. So, same with uh, U.S. and Japan. No? And other countries also make up their small size by taking advantage their strategic location. So, for example, the country um, Singapore and Switzerland. So, these are small countries. So, they compensate their lack of resources into financial banking hubs. So despite its small size, according to the ambassador to Singapore, Kathleen McFarland, 
Singapore sits astride one of the most important geostrategically important locations in the world. So it is the economic gateway between the East and the West as one of the world's most important trade routes on the Malacca Straits. And it is the world's largest transshipment port. So Singapore also is the security gateway between East and the West as the entrance to the South China Sea. Right, so third in most cases, however, countries form a regional alliance for they believe that strength, uh, there is strength in numbers. So when we talk about alliance, this is an international relations. Uh, it's either a formal agreement between two or more states or countries for mutual support in case of war. So contemporary alliances provide for combined action on the part of two or more independent states and are generally defensive in nature. So, obligating allies to join forces if one or more of them is attacked by another state or coalition. So, for example, is the, the Alliance of North Atlantic Treaty Organization or the NATO. So, this is for... Uh, military defense. No? The NATO is the most widely known defense grouping and it is formed during Cold War. So this was when the Western European countries plus uh, Western European countries plus United States no, agreed to protect Europe no, against the threat of the Soviet Union. No? And Another uh, alliance for military defense is the Warsaw Pact. Uh, the Soviet Union by then responded by creating a regional, another regional alliance. The Warsaw Pact consisting of the Eastern European countries under the Soviet do, uh, domination. So the Soviet, the Soviet Union imploded in December 1991, but the NATO st uh, still remain in its place, right? So then uh, regional alliances are formed. Uh, countries form regional organizations because they need to pour to pool their resources to get what better returns for their exports as well as expand their leverage against the trading partners so for example uh, uh, the organization of the petroleum countries or the opec which was established in 1960 so it was established by iran the countries iran iraq uh, kuwait saudi arabia and venezuela so this is to regulate the production and the sale of oil so this regional alliance flexed is its muscles in 1970s when its member countries took over the domestic production and dictated the, uh, the crude oil prices in the world. And OPEC's success convinced the nine other oil-producing countries you know, to join them. All right. Next is uh, countries form regional alliance to protect their independence from the pressures of the superpower politics. So, for example, the president of the Yugoslavia, Egypt, Ghana, and Indonesia, no, created the NAM, or what they call the Non-Allied Movement in 1961 to pursue world peace and international cooperation, human rights, national sovereignty, racial and national equality and non-intervention and peaceful conflict 
resolution. So at its peak, the NAM or the non-allied movement is or had 120 member countries. So the movement, however, was never formalized and continues to exist up to present although it lacks the same favor that it had in the past and finally what brings the countries together is because of economic crisis no? so economic crisis compels countries to come together so for example the Thai economy or the Thailand country in Asia so the Thai economy collapsed in 1996. So after its for, uh, after the foreign currency speculators and troubled international banks demanded that the Thai government pay back its loan. So there is a rapid withdrawal of foreign investments which bankrupted the economy of Thailand. So the crisis began to spread to other Asian countries as their currencies were also devalued and foreign investment left in a hurry. So with this, the IMF, if you have remembered, tried to reverse the crisis. But it was only after the ASEAN countries, uh, which are the Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, the Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam, no? along with China, Japan, and South Korea agreed to uh, establish an emergency fund to anticipate a crisis, a crisis that ASEAN economies stabilized. So the crisis made ASEAN more united and coordinated. All right? So it is not only the state, states or countries agreed to work or to join together in the name of a single cause or because of one reason. Communities also engage in region, uh, regional organizing. No? So this is what we call the, uh, near regionalism. So they can be uh, tiny associations, small associations that include no more, more than a few actors and focus on a single issue or a or huge continental unions that address a multitude of common problems from territorial defense to food security. So organizations um, representing this new regionalism likewise rely on the power of individuals, uh, non-government organizations or NGOs and associations to lead to link up with one another in pursuit of a particular goal. Also, this new regionalism uh, is identified with reformists who shares uh, the same values, norms, institutions, and systems that exist outside of the traditional and established mainstream institutions and systems. So some organizations partner with government to initiate social change. For example, the ASEAN uh, issued its human rights declaration in 2009, but the regional body left it to the member countries to apply the, dec the declaration's principles as they see it fit. So aware of those democratic rights are limited in many Asian countries. So these new regionalism organizations use this uh, declaration to pressure these governments to pass laws. Aside from that, uh, some regulations that protect and promote human rights. No? So um, examples of these regional organizations which dedicate themselves to specialized causes, these are the Rainforest Foundation, uh, the Regional Interfaith Youth Networks Organization, the Migrant Forum in Asia. So let's start with the uh, one orga with one organization, which is the Rainforest Organization, uh, Rainforest Foundation, which is 
established by the activists across um, Central and South America. So what is the aim of this organization? It, it aimed to protect the indigenous people and the rainforest of Brazil, Guyana, Panama, and Peru. So another organization is the Regional Interfaith Youth Networks. So this is formed by the young Christians across Africa, the Middle East, the Americas, and the Caribbean. No? What is the aim? To promote conf conflict um, prevention, conflict resolution, peace education, and sustainable development. Lastly, last example is the Migrant Forum Asia. This is another regional uh, NGO uh, and tradable unions which is committed to protect and promote the rights and the welfare of the migrant workers. Uh, so those are um, examples of the regional organizations no, with a specialized or which dedicate themselves to specialized causes. So these organizations primarily lies in their moral standing and their ability to combine lobbying with pressure politics. So unfortunately, um, most of them are poorly financed. So this places them at a disadvantage when dealing with their official counterparts who have large state funds. So their impact in global politics politics however is or therefore is limited so this new regionalism differs significantly from the traditional state to state regionalism so when it comes to identifying problems for example state treat poverty organization environment degradation as technical or economic issues that can be resolved by refining existing programs of state agencies and making minor changes in economic policies and creating new offices that address this issue. However, uh, near region regionalism advocates such as the NGO Global Forum see these issues as a reflection of a flawed economic development and environmental modern. So uh, today, uh, this regionalism faces um, multiple challenges and the most serious of which is the resurgence of militant nationalism and populism. So the relationship, for example, of the United States no? and uh, NATO. So, the alliance core member with the NATO has become problematic after Donald Trump demonized the organization as simply he believed that it is just leeching American military power without uh, giving anything in return. So, another example is the most crisis ridden regional organization today is the European Union. So the continuing financial crisis of the regions forcing countries like Greece no? like Greece to consider leaving the Union uh, un the Union to gain more flexibility to gain more flexibility in their economic policy. So anti-immigrant sentiment and a popul populist campaign uh, against Europe have already led to the United Kingdom voting to leave the European Union in the move the media has termed the Brexit. Right. So ASEAN members also Another challenge to re, uh, to regionalism in Asia, uh, like the ASEAN members, continue to disagree over the extent to which member countries should sacrifice their sovereignty for the sake of regional stability. So recently, ASEAN 
countries also disagreed over how to relate to China. So with the Philippines and able to get other countries support to support the condemnation of China's occupation no, in the West Philippine Sea. So final challenge to regionalism is the differing visions of what regionalis regionalism should be for the Western governments. No? So for the Western governments, they see regional organizations not simply as economic formations, but also an instrument of political democratization. And on the other hand, the non-Western and developing societies, however, may have a different view regarding uh, globaliza globalization, development, and democ democracy. Like Singapore, China, and Russia, they see democracy as an obstacle to the implementation and the deepening of economic globalization because constant public inquiry about economic projects and lengthy debate slow down the implementation or lead to um, unclear outcomes. Right? So... The factors or the difference between globalization and regionalism is that globalization, as we all know, it signifies the events relating to the globe all over the world. And it is the way countries and people of the world interact or integrate. So while the term regionalization refers to the event across regions, that are sub-global like Europe, Northern, Northern, Northern America, Amazon, in Brazil, no? ASEAN. And these regions are formed by two factors. No? Uh, we have here physical and cultural factors. Physical is defined by the landforms. No? like continent, mountain ranges, soil, natural vegetations. And another one, regions are formed because of cultural factor, which is distinguished, distinguished by such traits, languages, politics, religions, economic and industries. And these regions are kept together through the following. So like natural factor history factor, administration, polarization, and communication. So we have also these factors which leads to the greater integration of the ASEAN region, no? like trade, similar culture, common goals, mutual beliefs, similar security, and uh, similar security needs. So, indeed, the history of regionalism shows that regional associations emerge as the new global concern arise. So, the future of this regionalism will be contingent on the immense changes in the global politics that will emerge in the 21st century. So, I think that would be all for this lesson so goodbye everyone have a good day